Those aren't just for decoration. Please feel free to enjoy them. <laughs> oh, God. So here we are about to sacrifice <laughs> money, <laughs> troops, etc., to a place that we don't even have financial interest in, right? We're going to do all this, and somehow we're the bad guy. Is it bad publicity? Now, Patrice, you travel to the continent, as we call it, when well, we have this in our hands. I'm very You're well a worldly traveled, yes. guy. Yes. You travel to the continent a lot. Now, we know they think we're arrogant, but this is serious. They What's going on? Man. But see, here's the thing about, they, they here's the thing about them. Them. them, and when I say them, all foreigners, them, okay? Yes. <clears throat> it's almost like, uh, you know Duke's basketball team? Yes. You know how you love to hate them, but yeah. if they suck, you don't want to hate them? So they, they really need us to be arrogant, so if you think about it, except for kicking your ass and, right. you know, <laughs> arrogance. That's it's it, like you know. the about hating the guy that's oaring. What, what's the word for or? <laughs> or? No, what's the word? <laughs> you know, no, I mean, they're coming to my restaurant. Make, 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 make it go. Make it go. Yeah, they got it. They got it. No, but it is the arrogance. You know, look, America's such a big... It's like if you know a big, giant guy, and, and he, but he's a... He, well, uh, you know, and that's the United States after the Marshall Plan, you know, after World War II, then, then, pe then people right. will like the big giant guy that's nice. But if you're a big giant prick, then people will hate you, and that's Patrice. Is he talking to you? <laughs> 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 people don't care about our problem with Iraq because they're not going to be directly affected. You know, we're the ones who are in danger. That's why they don't care. You only care about things that affect you. I mean, I'm pro-choice because I'm not sterile. If I was sterile, I would be pro-life. Yeah. Uh, Stafford, what, yeah. What are we? What, uh, what are we number one in? Except for export. I don't know. Are we the number one uh, exporter? And like, can I? We that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Nothing. No, but that is a problem. That even that. That's what people hate about us too. I'm not saying they're right, but they're exporting our cultural, you know, our economic imperialism, the Gap stores, the Banana Republic stores. We have Banana Republic stores in Panama, for Christ's sake. No. Right? It's not economic imperialism. Panama, Panama, Panama is a banana republic. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you think of, every time you see TV, you see like you know the people cheering like crowds of like foreigners cheering because like you know usher is like opening the new planet hollywood in bangkok or something you know you think they love us but then you don't see all the starving behind they probably pay those people like two cents a day to get out there and they cheer want us, they want us to see they want to see us they want to see us down that's what the world trade center was was good for them to see because it gave them room to feel bad for us a little bit but it then it opened up uh, George W. To it's like, it's like vulnerable, the vulnerable side, like when, yeah, but when Jim Carrey did down. Yeah. Truman, when he played the serious part. But, but, Good example, been, boss. The United, Thanks. Yeah. The and United they don't States, hate us, by the way. They don't, they don't hate us. The right, United States has less support in the world now than we ever have before. That's yeah. got to upset people. I mean, even look, like I was in Vietnam. People in Vietnam don't hate the United States as much as, as Europe, for example, hates us right now. I was in the Vietnam. They, have that, uh, they still have a, a <laughs> Museum of American Atrocities over there. You know, yeah. But except he, that the only thing in there is a '76 Gremlin and a poster of Paulie Shore. <laughs> but they got over the even, war. But here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Now, Jim, as a gay man, I hope I'm not outing you. You're out, aren't you? Norton's gay. No. No. <laughs> I did it once for a ride, but. <laughs> <laughs> but Jim, don't you feel that, for instance, like a lot of people don't like Bush? You don't like Bush. In a lot of ways. I'm not even going to go there. Right. But I'm saying you don't like. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. You like Bush. That was George too easy. Bush. Uh, George Bush, you're right. Well, no, no, no. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, it's not in my interest to see my president fail. I mean, yeah. I, I will, he's my president and I'm going to support him and I don't, you know, but I don't think the axis of evil thing helped. I mean, just think of it but, from their point of view. I mean, like if you're sitting in, you know, in Iran and you're eating your hummus or whatever the hell you're eating and then all of a sudden this guy comes on TV and says, you're evil and you're going, what, we are evil? Who? We said, they said yeah. we are evil? They, you know, perception not matters. Matter. I mean, people hate America for a lot of different reasons, but it's perception. Like he said, the axis of evil speech by George Bush, that affect, you know, he, when he acts like he hates all the rest the world and doesn't care what they think that's going to affect us you know bill clinton went in and and uh, did a lot of military actions without u.n approval but nobody cared because people respected and thought that bill clinton liked europe like the french you know the french had no problem with bill clinton because he was cheating on his wife and they admire that uh -huh. but <laughs> i hate to bring my friend is a real party, i'm just realizing i hate he really you he's a scared little man I, what do you mean why don't you back our president why don't you go, you. we're going to war and deal with well, it well, wait, wait, wait. What, what do you mean let me ask you this here's the other question speaking of scared nobody talks about the fact that Israel, and I hate to bring this up because people are going to think I'm like Adolf Hitler, but the, just the truth is a lot of people say Israel is the reason everybody hates us. Yes or no? No, they're jealous of us. 
What about Israel? They the, that's not to do with Israel. <laughs> I know it doesn't, yet I brought it up and then you switched back to the <laughs> yeah, other that's one. Right, that's that's why I thought I'd say it again. No, they shut up. They scared of show business failure, which you already have without the Jews going against you. No, 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 no. I, it's nothing to do with my show business failure. I know I'm nothing. Can you eat that or put it down, please, you coward? <laughs> 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 I think that people really don't hate us. They just don't like the people that end up, you know, over there, like, you know, taking the national resources by computer and stuff while they're in a courtyard watching a donkey get beat up by a couple of one-eyed goats. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. Now, you want to talk about censorship? They just told me to stop eating these on the air, all right? Stupid, you almost got me fired for my own job, dum-dum. Sorry for yourself, because you'll be out of work too, idiot. <laughs> now, they're like, we really don't want it to bleed in your teeth. Now, the Oscars are coming up like the Super Bowl. We all get excited about the Oscars, right? It's, it's no. like the Super Bowl. <laughs> no, you don't like the Oscars? No. Why not? Because they stink. Well, okay, why do they stink? Because they're not accurate. They do nothing but give out the wrong awards to the wrong people for the wrong reason. I see. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, you know what? I totally agree with you on that. Like, Nicole Kidman was nominated for an Oscar for the Hours because she wears a fake nose. But it's like, oh, she's really a beautiful woman. I mean, if they were you... Go but, yeah, she was great. But, I mean, let's not forget that she's gorgeous. If they were going to really be authentic in that part, they would have cast Danny DeVito. <laughs> The hours, the hours was, it was, it was, should have been called Three Crazy Bitches. That was a frightening film. <laughs> the hours was like sitting through menopause. Every scene, if I want to spend that much time with a bunch of miserable women, I'll watch The View. <laughs> that always drove me crazy. You know, I, I, Thank I, you I both. Mean, so please don't ruin the ending. Um, I was going to say, <laughs> oh, go ahead. I, I first of all, um, the assignment was for all of us to see all the movies. These sons of bitches did their homework and you two didn't see it. Look, I knew you weren't going to see it because you were the only black guy that went to see uh, The Hours. Yeah. What, who was it about? Was it about any famous people The Hours? Yeah. Who? Nicole Kidman. <laughs> <laughs> you truly are a joke. No, it was about, it was about that you stupid uh, that Virginia Woolf who cares about her. I did see about Schmidt. Did you see that? Yeah. Oh, no, she, Pat, uh, Kathy Bates was naked in that. Yeah, yeah. Kathy Bates. That's the that last movie one. stunk. It was she, boring. Oh, she I loved it. Things. I thought it was great. Yeah, I love that she's up there. They keep saying she's brave because she got she got naked. It's like it's like she's yeah. got she's yeah. got seeing, balls. Seeing an and old we saw fat them. naked lady was like <laughs> seeing an old fat naked lady was like seeing Norton's mom at work. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Was that was that really? I was really. Your hey, fat mother. Now, Jim, let's do a movie. I know you saw it several times. Are <laughs> you probably see some of the outfits? Probably Chicago. What, what, Chicago? <laughs> you probably have two of Renee Zellweger's outfits at home. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of Chicago? I thought it was great. Thank you. I thought, I thought Chicago was great. It's got it's got murder. It's got beautiful girls. It's got tap dancing. It's got scandal. It's show got tunes. Show Come tunes. On. But it's not. It's a. You know what it is? Chicago. Chicago. Intrigue. Chicago is a musical for people who hate musicals. No, it's not. It stinks. You didn't uh, see it. Exactly. You didn't see it. I see what I saw the <laughs> Your performance in Spider-Man, idiot. Yeah. You're picking me off in Spider-Man. And yeah, I was really good, good in the 25th hour. Shut up. I was going to bring that up next. I, I was very good. The thing that me about Norton, he had one line in Spider-Man. You could tell he's like, hey, this is just the beginning, like Bronson Pinchot and Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, yeah, he's going to leave this in. <laughs> that was your first and last role in a movie. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> now, you I was terrific. First of all, what did you play in... Tell, why don't you tell the people... 25th hour, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and what did you play? They probably don't recognize you with... It was a stretch. I played... Was I it played a doorman, show? but it was really, it was, it was pivotal. Yeah, <laughs> moving. Uh, he was the 26th hour. Nope, you'll be in the director's what? cut. What? <laughs> Nothing. Great. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Now, guess, guess what, guys? There's actually something to talk about with the actual Oscars. Now, they're saying no red carpet this year, out of respect. What do you think about that? To who? Oh, who? There's going to be no red carpet yeah. to walk down. Out of respect for what? For the war. I think that's great, because I think they should give a special Oscar to whoever gets past Joan Rivers without beating her to death. <laughs> I want to bash you know, her face. You no, know, he's in. happy about no red carpet. He probably has a dress made out of red ribbons. <laughs> I don't How did you know? Can you leave skinny Jiminy Glick alone? <laughs> oh, come on. Leave Don not alone while you're explaining the story. Yeah. Go ahead, listen, uh, speaking, of, uh, speaking of pedophiles, speaking of pedophiles, what do you think of the uh, what do you think of the whole thing with uh, uh, what's his name? Roman uh, Polanski. Roman Polanski. He shouldn't be nominated. Um, although the fact that he can be a pedophile and still be nominated does give a lot of us hope. <laughs> 
Yeah, I can't well, wait. You know what, though? You know what? Good. The you know what? Good. You know what? He, he, wait. his mother got killed in the concentration camp, and his wife got killed by the Manson family. Isn't he entitled to a little teenager? <laughs> You know, I just for one. I love that he ran away to France. France. That's just great. Like he raped a 13-year-old girl and then he runs he away to France. France. Where, well, stop with the with the what? Stop with what? Wait, he didn't. Wait, he, he, she, she left with him. Like, just yeah. chill out. So chill he raped. He raped the 13-year-old ah! girl. Shut up, dummy. Let me yeah, get my point. Let me get his point. He rapes. He rapes the 13-year-old girl and then he goes to France. Where, like in France, it's totally acceptable somehow. It's good because all the men in France look like 13-year-old girls. So like, well, they do. It's really not a problem. Now. The Pianist was a great movie. That was great. The Pianist was just good. Oh, yeah. He, I saw know, them all. He hid in all, my these little, all these little tiny attics, you know? It would make yeah. Matrix uh, effects in that movie. That would have been really good. <laughs> oh, you love that it. That was awful. <laughs> That was a good movie, though. I don't uh, know, right? You might want to start writing things down. The penis? Shut up. The penis is good. Look, the penis... Did you, just, wait, wait, did you just cover up that bomb by going, no, but seriously, that was a good yeah, film. Yeah, of course I did. You saw it ate his balls. I'm trying to it get out of it. That penis took a pretty anti-Nazi take on the whole thing, though, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Uh, you didn't approve of that? Yeah, well, I, you know... That's the easy like way out. I like to more even-handed... It's the easy approach. way out. Yeah, that was a good movie, though. It really was an excellent movie. Oh, you're so proud that you saw that. I saw that movie, aren't you? All the movies I saw were excellent. Because for once you Gangs didn't see New York. Oh, because for once great. you didn't see a movie oh. like Stone Jet Li, so you feel like you're an intellectual now. <laughs> Gangs of New York was excellent. How did, what do you think? Gangs of New York stunk. Well, that's that's what that I was, it was like Mick Pride. You should have loved that. It was not Mick Pride. The only one was Daniel Day Lewis. The rest of it was corny. That you, you, didn't was like, like, you didn't like that. You didn't like about Schmidt. What, what do you like? Dumps with car chasers, you jackass. Yeah. About Schmidt. What, what do you like? Dumps with car chasers, you jackass. Yeah. <laughs> I like Night at the Roxbury, starring me and Will. That's true. Oh. That never got an Oscar. I think Colin's movie that he's been in, they had a grand total of $4,600 at the box office. <laughs> Colin, Colin was in Married to the Mob, which they shot, they shot that in my apartment. Did they, that was your apartment? Yeah, it was my apartment. Oh, Yeah, so that's, that's why just, I got kicked out. I was wondering what that uh, swing was in the bedroom. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was mine. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? Well, uh-huh. Mm. Uh, here we are arguing over the Oscars, and none of us has ever even been nominated for an American Comedy Award, which is pathetic. <laughs> we'll be right back at this commercial. <laughs> so is it true? I'm not sure. From what I've seen, drugs fun things like two pit bulls in the back of a low-riding gold Lexus. <laughs> but they say that if you buy some heroin, then you're giving money to a drug dealer who gives it to an opium cartel in Afghanistan who gives weapons and money to Al-Qaeda. But let's take a closer look at this. Tonight, with the help of my beautiful assistant, Jim. <laughs> Just shut up and do the job. Don't be hamming it up. <laughs> I'm going to show you how almost everyone is somehow linked to Al-Qaeda. So to find out who's funding terrorism, let's do what Deep Throat told us 30 years ago, follow the money. The government says that Al-Qaeda got most of its funds through two money laundering organizations called Al-Barakhar and al qaeda <laughs> They say these groups not only help wire money to terrorists, they provided secure telephone and internet service. And who pays thousands of dollars a year for a private internet connection? Pete Townsend, damn it. That's right, you heard me. That's right, Pete Townsend. Damn it, I'll say it to his face. When it comes to terrorism, we won't get fooled again. Now, another way these terrorist scumbags, that's tough talk, get funding is from fake charities. Like there was a charity out in Chicago called Benevolence International that got shut down because the owner was funneling millions to Bin Laden. One of the ways Benevolence International got its money was from people <laughs> who wanted to adopt kids in third world countries. And who loves to adopt third world kids? M Mia Farrow, you heard me. Yeah. Oh, say hello to Rosemary's babies. <laughs> Another way Al-Qaeda gets its money is through ties to the West African diamond trade. Agents in Liberia ship the diamonds to America and they're bought by a wholesaler in New Orleans. And who buys all the uh, diamonds in New Orleans? That's right, the cash money millionaires, damn it. A little less bling bling, a little more patriotism. Finally, one of the main guys who gave money to Al-Qaeda was a wealthy Saudi businessman named Mustafa al Hasawi. And where did these rich Saudi guys go to spend their dirty money? Las Vegas. And who just got a check from doing a week at the Tropicana Hotel and Casino last fall? Yeah, me. And what did I do with my money, what I spend it on? Okay, you know. We're all a little bit guilty, and thank you, Jim. That was a heck of a job. You're a true...
Patrice was just pointing out the overacting Jim did in Act 3, trying to bring charisma to his role. Yeah, I, I was good. Assistant. I was good. I saw the scene. Yeah, in just a few days... Stupid. I'm sorry, uh -huh. A few days, our, our best and brightest Americans will once again face the most fearsome people on the planet, Joan Rivers and her daughter, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> I've asked these guys to pretend the impossible has happened and give their Oscar acceptance speech. Let's start with Greg. Oh, my God. This moment is so much bigger than me. This moment is for Emilio Estevez, Freddie Prince Jr., and Lorenzo Lamas. And for every nameless, faceless, assimilated, white Latino guy who, who now has a chance because this door tonight has been opened. I stand on the shoulders of giants before me. Lorenzo Lamas' is early work in Greece and later in Snake Eater 2. And, and of course, Emilio Estevez in the Mighty Ducks trilogy in that Garbage Man movie. <laughs> Guys, this is for you. Muchisimas gracias. Ah, oh, beautiful. All right. Jim Norton. Uh, well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank the older gentleman who made me kiss his dinky when I was seven years old, which not only made me hate myself so much that I had no choice but to beg and grovel for love by entertaining, but it also showed me exactly what I'd have to do to get ahead in Hollywood. And uh, most importantly, I'd like to thank people like Alec Baldwin and Janine Garofalo for proving that you can have a great career even if you lack any talent just by standing on a soapbox, babbling melodramatically, and making a total ass out of yourself on television day after day. Patricio! Patricio O'Neill! First of all, I'd like to thank my fellow nominees, <laughs> Greg Giraldo, for uh, his role in Obscurity. I was on Conan 14 times in The Letterman, but no one still knows me. Uh, <laughs> Jim Davis for his inspired performance in Gobble Gobble, the Frank Perdue story. <laughs> How he actually tried to look like Frank Perdue for his role. <laughs> and Jim Norton in his wonderful performance in I Was a Teenage Wear Clam. As he <laughs> turns into a mullet right before your eyes. And uh, <laughs> to my ex-girlfriend for believing I, if I became famous after we split up, I'd still buy her house. Whatever. <laughs> and, and my mom. <laughs> Jim David. <laughs> oh, it's like a car accident. All right. I have a thousand people to thank, so I'll be brief. To the guys who beat me up in high school, may your life be an endless parade of child support and restraining orders. <laughs> to the priest in my Catholic school, may your prison time pass quickly. And to my acting teacher who said I would never make it and who's been in the closet longer than a Nehru jacket, I say, sit on this, you old queen. <laughs> All right. Jim, Jim was giving a real speech. He really was. I'd like to thank the Academy for my early roles in movies like Married to the Mob, where Matthew Modine made a joke about my voice, and I wanted to stab him. <laughs> I was like a, lo a glorified actor. He's like, hey, that guy really does sound like that. <laughs> Three Men and a Baby, where Tom Selleck yelled at me for not rehearsing with him. As I said before, I'd like to knock him out. And one time, I auditioned for Cocktail with Tom Cruise, and I was auditioned to be a bartender, and I pretended to be making uh, an imaginary drink, and one of the producers goes, you don't have to do that. And Tom, I look at Tom, like, humiliated, and he goes, shrugs his shoulders, like, but Tom, you have no power? You are like a giant star at that time. <laughs> well, I don't know what to do. Yeah, you don't know you're Tom Cruise. You can't tell the guy shut his mouth. This guy's trying to do a little pantomime work. <laughs> so, I mean, that's about the end of it. I'm not going to jump on that other one. And, uh... I got plenty more. Folks, if you have any comments or thoughts about this show, please visit the Comedy Central website and go to the Tough Crowd message board. Good night.